Hey friends, sorry it's been a while since I've made a video. I actually broke my main microphone that I use for the majority of my recordings, and so I'm having to use my kind of go live setup to make uh, recordings. It's a little bit more difficult. I was expecting to get the microphone serviced pretty quickly, but that's not going to happen. So I just went ahead and bought another one, and uh, it should be here in a few days. But I wanted to go over something in the meantime that seemed like a pretty big deal and I didn't see a lot of it in the alternative news space covering Tucker Carlson the other day and he made a monologue that I think pretty much everybody should hear so I definitely wanted to bring it to you guys we'll go over it together I might stop it at some points I might not I don't know but let's go ahead and get into it good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight happy Wednesday well, it looks like this is the part of the revolution where they start throwing their political opponents in jail. Wow, that was fast. It was just a week ago they were telling us about unity. Remember that? What we didn't know at the time is they meant that everyone with power should unite against the rest of the country. Unity meant oligarchy. Oh. Doug Mackey learned that the hard way this morning. Mackey is a 31-year-old conservative journalist from Florida. At 7 a.m., FBI agents showed up at Mackey's house. They threw him in handcuffs and they dragged him to a cell. He now faces 10 years in prison. His crime? He made fun of powerful Democrats on social media. As the federal criminal complaint puts it, quote, Mackey made coordinated use of social media to spread disinformation relevant to the impending 2016 presidential election. This disinformation, the Biden administration solemnly explained, quote, often took the form of memes. All right, so... I haven't had time to bring a bunch of the news that I have saved up to you guys for you guys to you, but also the White House .gov has removed the petitioning si part of the White House website completely from that from White House .gov. So the it was created by the Obama administration where people, if you got a hundred thousand signatures or more or something like that, you could get uh, the White House had to answer certain um, petitions. Well. The Biden administration's quietly just removed that completely. You can no longer petition anything to whitehouse.gov, and the press has not covered it whatsoever. On top of that, you're seeing the, the arrest of this guy, and this is, guys, this could be any of us. Look at that paragraph. Knowing the way that the controllers work and reading that paragraph, you should know that that paragraph right there could be used to describe any conservative who shares any memes that are even halfway good memes. Yes, memes. Online mockery. Mockery online is now illegal when it's aimed at the wrong people. Doug Mackey hurt their feelings, so they put him in jail. According to Joe Biden's Justice Department, Doug Mackey violated 18 U.S. Code Section 241. He did this by tricking people like the dastardly trickster that he is into not voting in the presidential election. What's interesting is that prosecutors showed no evidence whatsoever that Doug Mackey actually tricked anyone into anything, voting or not, not a single person. But that doesn't matter, shrieks CNN. Doug Mackey is a bad person with bad views. And by the way, we have no idea what Doug Mackey's views are. We don't care. What CNN is telling us is that those views are a crime. He's a criminal. Lock him up. Give him a longer sentence than we give to rapists which they're trying to do. As of tonight, that is the official position of the lynch mob channel. But hold on a minute, as a legal matter. Have you ever read 18 U.S. Code Section 241? Probably not, but you should. Look it up. When you read it, you will learn that Joe Biden's Justice Department is lying in a very obvious way, and that should make you very nervous. It turns out that federal law does not ban memes, or for that matter, misinformation, whatever that is, the law that Biden's prosecutors are citing instead prohibits, quote, conspiring to injure, oppress, threaten, or intimidate anyone from exercising the right to vote. According to the law, that would include kidnapping voters, invading their homes, sexually abusing them. Doug Mackey didn't do any of that, not even close to any of that. Doug Mackey made memes. Therefore, he's a domestic terrorist. Speech is violence. Dissent is a felony. What you may be wondering, does a case... Speech is violence, dissent is a felony. You guys, this... You know what? Tucker kind of reminds me of that reporter in V from Vendetta that... Well, anyways. You guys, he's sounding the alarm bell here. This is way bigger of a deal than most people are giving it credit 
we're now we saw the weaponization of the Capitol Hill incident used to redirect the intelligence community towards what they were calling domestic terrorists and who in a lot of people's minds were just stupid MAGA people who tried to rush the Capitol building. And I think the definition of terrorist has gotten somewhat lost in the sauce. But outside of that, we've seen people be deplatformed. And I make these videos about, hey, this is a warning sign. This is something that people who way, are way smarter than me told us told me to look out for. Tucker's doing the same thing in this video. He's making the exact same statement. Hey, this is a warning sign. So when Alex Jones was deplatformed, when they completely erased the Anon coverage from YouTube, when we saw all the coordinated efforts between Apple and Google to take Trump off the interwebs, now we're seeing that the federal government is arresting people for insulting people with memes and being politically deceptive, as they say, and yet in their own write-up, they, they present no proof that he actually violated that code. What he really did was make angry some Democrat politicians who are now in the position to do this to him and are. And what the reason why this is a warning sign is, is because what they can do, they will do. And I know it's hard because a lot of people just don't get it. It's not happening to me. I don't see it in my backyard. Therefore, I don't think it's real. I get it. I know a lot of people who think that way. But I'm telling you right now, it's Doug Mackey today and it's you tomorrow. This mean for the First Amendment? Well, it means that it's effectively suspended. You can now be arrested for saying the wrong things. And at 7 a.m. this morning, one journalist actually was arrested for that. Almost no one tonight seems to be defending him. He had bad thoughts. He deserves it. They think it's okay. And that shouldn't surprise you. Because we're clearly living under some form of martial law at the moment. How do we know that? Well, here's one indication. There are nearly 10,000 federal troops in our capital city tonight. Ooh, that's a hint. Why are they there? How long will they be staying? No one is being very specific about any of that, so you're left to draw your own conclusion. Why are they there and how long will they be saying, staying? See, he poses those questions, but it's because he can't answer them on air. Like, I could give you the answers to those questions right now, but this video wouldn't make it past the algorithm. We all know why they're there. Which people naturally are. And by the way, it's not making anyone more moderate. If you're really worried about extremism, you probably wouldn't put 10,000 federal troops in your capital city, making everyone more radical and crazy. But they don't care about that. The point of this whole highly militarized exercise is to remind you of what Chairman Mao once famously said. Political power grows from the barrel of a gun. Unfortunately, that is true in every country at all times. Connecticut Senator Chris Murphy is no genius, but he does understand that. As he explained today, as long as his political opponents exist, those soldiers will stay. The threat to the country is not over, right? We still have 5,000 National Guard members surrounding the Capitol complex. Why? Because there are still existing threats, present threats to the security of the Capitol. Uh, and, and so, so long as Donald Trump is empowered by Senate Republicans, there is still the chance that he is going to incite another attempt uh, at the Capitol. The threat is still very real to American democracy. Okay. Just for the record, he did not incite the first one. So as long as there are people in this country who persist in disagreeing with Chris Murphy, explains Chris Murphy, we're going to need to keep thousands of heavily armed soldiers on the scene. Why specifically? Because, and we're quoting now, the threat is still very real to American democracy. But wait, democracy requires soldiers? We thought it was voluntary. If you're starting to think that maybe someone at some point secretly redefined the term democracy, changing its meaning to roughly 180 degrees from what it was just last year, you may be onto something. What we're looking at now is not democracy in the classical Athenian sense, where everyone gets to vote and the voice of everyone matters equally. No, what we're looking at now is instead democracy in the 1970s Eastern Bloc People's Democratic Republic sense. This new version of democracy is a democracy where everyone fervently agrees with the people in power or else they go immediately to jail. Doug Mackey's problem, it turns out, is that he didn't properly understand what democracy is. Thankfully, Congressman Tim Ryan of Ohio does understand it, and he explained it to us today. We're not letting those soldiers go home, Tim Ryan said, until they do what our special operations forces did in Iraq and Afghanistan. Watch this. Who in our government, in our military, have had experience around 
uh, crowd control, maybe even special operations forces in, in Iraq and Afghanistan. Like, how can we learn everything we need to learn to reset the posture on Capitol Hill? And, and we're not going to let the National Guard go home uh, or we're not, not going to create an unsafe environment for the country's business until we have that figured out. Oh, they're specialists in controlling unruly populations. We get it. Rather than answer our questions or improve our lives, you're bringing in people with guns to remind us that you're in charge and dissent is illegal. That's a big change. You may have thought you were a decent American in good standing. Ten years ago, nobody in this country would have called your views extreme. They weren't extreme then. You don't think they're extreme now? You've always considered yourself a pretty moderate person. Live your life and get along with others. Oh, oh, oh that's not possible now because the rules have changed. You are now a dangerous insurgent. You are no different from a bloodthirsty Pashtun in Helmand province or an ISIS terrorist in Erbil. You're part of a guerrilla insurgency. Or maybe it's a gorilla consurgency. That's possible, too. Have you seen the pictures from January 6th? Some of those terror leaders seem suspiciously furry. Here's the mastermind behind that terrible insurrection. The jihadi known by his nom de guerre, Chewbacca guy. <laughs> hey! Hey, man. Glad to see you guys. You guys are patriots. Look at this guy. He's got me covered in blood. God bless you. Yes, you good, sir? Do you need medical attention? I'm good, thank you. All right. I got shot in the face. I got shot in the face with some kind of plastic bullet. Any chance I can get you guys yeah. to leave the Senate wing? We will. I've been making sure they ain't disrespecting the place. Okay, just want to let you guys know this is like the sacredest place. I know. Sad news tonight. Chewbacca guy is no longer available for your kid's seventh birthday party. He's in prison tonight. We'll tell you when they move him to Gitmo or some undisclosed black site. And when they do, Sandy Court... And you guys, this is important. Like, if, you, if you're somebody like me and you've poured through the hours and hours and hours of Capitol Hill footage, you know that what happened there was largely a bunch of yahoos that got wrapped up in a an event that had certain people there instigating and... And those people who were instigating, unfortunately, had the correct uh, personality type, the correct archetype of person there to cause what they caused to happen. But when you look at the video, you realize these are not insurgents who mastermind an insurrection, okay? These are <laughs> morons. They're just morons. And to be comparing these guys to insurgents in Iraq, to be saying that the troops aren't going to leave D.C. until these threats that come from, coming from these horrible domestic terrorists stop, it's very strange when you actually look at the footage from the Capitol Hill incident. And I'm not talking about the 15 minutes total of... Uh, a co uh, of a collage of 15 second clips that make it look like it was hell on earth. I'm talking about pouring through the hundreds of hours of video footage that shows it really wasn't what they really wanted to to have been. But the problem here is Chewbacca guy, which is hilarious, and the idiot that he is, is he's looking at 10 years in the feds. Now how much time do you get at, in the state for second degree murder? Now, do you think that Chewbacca guy is an insurgent who deserves to be classified that way? Or do you think that he's just a dumb guy who made a bad decision? And I don't, I, I just don't know, man. It's very concerning to me. You add that to the reporter who is now looking at 10 years for supposedly misleading people about the vote, although in the write-up it doesn't say that he did in any way, shape, or form. It just says that he insulted people with memes. And nobody's really kind of talking about this. I'm glad Tucker is. And, you know, Tucker's on, you know, he's right sometimes. And he's right here. But this is really way more concerning than what people are letting on. This will breathe easier. 
Back during the great terrorist siege of January 6th, Sandy Cortez found herself in the same city as Chewbacca guy, literally in the same city, trapped and abandoned, like just like those lonely, valiant troops in Corregidor so many years ago. She really thought she was going to die. I had a pretty traumatizing event happen to me. I can tell you that I had a very close encounter where I thought I was going to die. So thankfully, they've arrested Chewbacca guy and the rest of his marauding band of terrorists, many of them well over 65 years old. So there's still a little justice in this country. But hairy stoners in Viking hats are not the only threat that Sandy Cortez faces tonight. No, far from it. There are the other members of Congress to worry about. Some of them are Republicans, and you know what that means. At any moment, these people are likely to open fire indiscriminately on the House floor purely out of racism. And of course, she's worried about that. Listen. We still don't yet feel safe around other members of Congress. How many are we? uh, I think a very considerable amount. The moment you bring a gun onto the House floor in violation of rules, you put everyone around you in danger. I don't care if you accidentally set it off. I don't care if you intentionally set it off. I don't care if you don't set it off at all. You You are endangering the lives of members of Congress. And it is absolutely outrageous that we even have to have this conversation. It's outrageous. Absolutely outrageous, said the leader of America's narcissism party, the fastest growing party in the country. (laughs) Even on the House floor, surrounded by other elected members of Congress, democratically elected, Sandy Cortez did not feel safe. And that, my friends, is why we need tens of thousands. And you know who she's talking about, Marjorie Taylor Greene or whatever. I did a video about her the other day. AOC is... I don't know what to say. I've mentioned archetypes today already once. She's a specific archetype of person as well. And she's, I've never really liked her type of person. You guys remember when she faked that whole scene down at the border and she got memed into obliteration? Armed federal troops right outside her office tonight so that Sandy Cortez can finally, for once, take a breath and get back to the vital business of making perky Instagram videos about herself. (laughs) The business of the people. It must go on. (laughs) Well, of course it must. We all support that. Though now that we're talking about the people, you've got to wonder what they think of all of this. The actual people. No one in power cares what they think, obviously. None of this is about the people who are actually suffering in our country, the millions of them. No. We're watching one of those rare revolutions, rare in world history, that's being waged not on behalf of the general population, but waged against it. All of this is being done expressly for the oligarchs. None of it is being done for you. Of course, if you live in Washington, D.C., you already knew that very well. Federal troops are not protecting your home tonight. Sandy Cortez doesn't care if you get robbed or carjacked, as more and more people are, as crime skyrockets. Sandy Cortez and her friends want to abolish your police, not their police. Here's a scene from the rest of the city of Washington. Carmelo Duncan was 15 months old when he was fatally shot Wednesday night in Southeast. His father was driving the vehicle and the toddler was strapped into his car seat when he was struck with bullets. The preliminary investigation point out at least two people opened fire on the car as it drove by Southern Ave, hitting the car at least 10 times. The toddler was struck with bullets in his car seat right next to his father. This happened in Washington, D.C., within walking distance of the Capitol. But no one inside that domed building, the ones who were so afraid of Chewbacca Man, noticed or cared. So whatever else you conclude from this, this tale of two cities, to dip into the cliche bin for a moment, here's one thing you could be certain of. It's not actually violence that Sandy Cortez and her fellow Democrats are worried about. No, it's something else. So why are all those federal troops at the Capitol? And that's a good question, but that's not the only thing that he brought up. He, he, you know, that's the main thing, but it's not the only thing. And it's important. We need to start thinking about they're arresting this reporter. They arrested all of those people at the Capitol Hill incident. They're completely deplatforming large conservative voices. They shut down comment sections on the YouTube, uh, uh, White House YouTube account. They put lids on their press 
uh, viewing or their pr they, they they close Biden off to the press at 9 a.m. all the time. Uh, <clears throat> they remove the White House petitioning site from WhiteHouse.gov. This is all kind of concerning as they sit behind their National Guard troops and their razor wire in D.C separating themselves from the regular folks that live in D.C. because they're the political elite and they get to sit behind Constantina wire and armed guards. I think it's time that civilians, regular Americans, start asking for the troops that are in D.C. to come home. Just my thoughts. Alright y'all, like, share, sub the channel. I'll talk to you later. Peace.